As a child, I loved adventure stories, and being in the outdoors made me feel alive. Travelling to wild places has become my way of life. For me, it's all about connecting to people and the lands they live in, and I'm passionate about sharing my experiences through writing and film. My biggest journeys were rafting one of the world's longest rivers and riding a bicycle from Moscow to Beijing. When I was 20 years old, my friend Chris and I were cycling across Mongolia. While struggling through the Gobi Desert one day, these amazing wild horsemen came galloping from over the horizon. They headed off to places that our bikes could never have gone. These people had a world without boundaries. From here in Mongolia stretched the great Eurasian steppe to Hungary, and their ancestors were once warriors who crossed this vast space. It inspired in me a dream to live the life of a nomad and ride a horse from Mongolia to the Danube. I never imagined what lay before me. Long nights alone menaced by wolves and thieves, impossible mountain passes, and the most extreme climate on earth. I'd even be caught in a war between sedentary and nomad people and face a personal tragedy that almost ended my journey. But I was driven on by an old nomad wisdom. To understand the wolf, you must put on the skin of a wolf and see through its eyes. When the Soviet Union collapsed, what had been out of bounds for so long was now open, and I had a chance to discover whether the nomad spirit does exist among the scattered nations of Eurasia. <laughs> got about 10,000 k's to go now. It's got to find the horse. I found a horse all right, the biggest in the world, and in the saddle a giant Genghis Khan. In the West, he's mainly remembered as a ruthless barbarian who terrorised Europe. But in Mongolia, he's a national hero. Every day near the capital, they celebrate the mighty Khan's conquests. A poor nomad boy who went on to command the greatest empire in history. Today, more than half the world's population live in lands he once ruled. Yet we know so little about these nomads these people who brought horses to the rest of the world. A local told me that if I had any chance of making this journey, I'd need hero horses. These are the kind of tough mounts that would have once carried Genghis Khan himself. The only problem is, I can't ride a horse. <laughs> When I arrived here and saw the horses and smelt the horses, it just struck me it's, it's actually happening. And it made me realise I don't know much about horses. And the thought of, of going 10,000 k's, it's uh, actually pretty frightening. These people are making fun of my gear and they want me to leave it behind. They even joke that white men can't ride. And what are you going to do when the wolves attack and when the thieves steal your horses? Eventually I was offered my first horse, and this is how they proved to me that it's a nomkhon, which means calm. And this guy's still pretty quiet. To start with I bought two horses, one for riding and one for my equipment. I'm planning to trade these for others as I go. It's weight that kills horses, not distance. So I've got two pairs of trousers, a couple of shirts, and two pairs of underwear that can easily become four by turning them inside out. The first question that everyone asks me is, are you carrying a gun? And no, I'm not. I guess I just trust in the better side of human nature. Here I am, finally setting off on my 10,000 kilometre journey. But the locals don't think I'll make it more than a few days. I've allowed four months in Mongolia to travel 1,500 kilometres 
to the Altai Mountains on the border of Kazakhstan before the winter turns the steppe into an arctic wasteland. I'm doing this journey alone and on a very small budget. I want to write a book, make a film and really get into the skin of these people. I planned the journey to take 18 months to Hungary, but it was a huge underestimation of the struggle ahead. You could plan for a trip like this all your life and never be ready. Even though we live in the 21st century and I've got this satellite phone, a video camera and my laptop, it's not going to save me. I'm hoping to put myself through the same conditions that nomads experience. The landscape spreads out in some ways like one big ocean. You think it's four kilometres to the horizon, but it's actually ten. From here, the Mongols once headed west, didn't stop until they'd conquered everything as far as Europe. And at the moment, I'm struggling just to conquer the heat, handling the horses, and just getting by every day. Uh, it's about 34, 35 degrees now during the day. The weather here is unbelievable. One moment it's really hot, about 25 degrees. Next minute a big wall of clouds and a storm will just come rolling over. It'll just snap freeze. Your eyes become very well trained at finding good grass, finding water, and anything on the horizon that even looks remotely unnatural, you tend to pick it up very, very quickly. And in Mongolia there's almost always a couple of herders, a couple of riders, somewhere in the distance, and you know they've got their binoculars out, staring at you. I've got to learn how to hobble the horses and stake them out. Out here, there are no fences. It's one of my greatest fears that they'll bolt off with everything and leave me stranded, alone. Without trusting that the odds will favour you when you take a risk, you'd never even begin a journey like this. This is the first journey I've done alone, and the scariest time is at night. The dangers they've warned me about all seem so much more real. I heard this terrible neighing from my horse and so I ran into the dark and just discovered um, probably the worst thing possible. Two horses were gone. Come back! And um, I could even hear them in the distance just being taken away. Oh no. Oh no, you can't. But I couldn't do anything, it was pitch black. It's about 2.30 in the morning. There's a Mongolian saying, if you don't solve your problems before dawn, then you'll never solve them. The following morning I was more than lucky to find my horses among a herd. A local herder said to me, oh yeah, I know these are your horses, they came to me by themselves. You must have tied them really badly. He taught me a very valuable lesson. He said, a man on the step without friends is as narrow as a finger. A man on the step with friends is as wide as the step. If I camp alone, I'm fair game. I need to get to know the people, make friends, and camp nearer to their yurts, or gurs as they're known in Mongolia. By the unwritten laws of the steppe, I'll then be offered protection. These people are really trusting me without any hesitation. But 
I don't think there's anywhere else in the world where I'd be embraced so openly by strangers. It's always busy here. They're up at five or six every day, milking and rounding up the yaks. This is the morning routine, being woken up with fresh yoghurt, tea and yak butter. Nomads really appreciate my horse tack, so it's my saddles, ropes and reins I've got to keep an eye on. My other equipment, like my video camera and satellite phone, they're not so interested in. I've got to be careful with this little fella or I'll lose everything. I don't speak much Mongolian, but out here everyone understands the language of the horse. People immediately know what my needs are. The wealth and pride of a nomad is still measured by the size of his herd. For nomads, the horse has always been at the core of life. Horses were first tamed and ridden on the steppe more than 5,000 years ago, and they've been hunted for much longer. In summer, fermented mare's milk called Eirig is a staple. Slightly alcoholic, it was one of Genghis Khan's loves. Horse manure is used for heating and cooking, and it's hung from the ceiling to keep evil spirits away. Even the ropes that tie together the gurs are made from horsehair. And so are the strings of the horsehead fiddle, called the Morin Khor. It was nomads who introduced bowed string instruments to the rest of the world. These people have always lived by the rhythms and the moods of the steppe, respecting the wolf and worshipping the horse. In the past, nomads were even buried with their horses. They believed that the spirit inhabits every living creature, the earth, the sky and everything around us.